This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guest star of the new Warner Brothers picture in our time, Paul Henreid, with Jimmy Cash and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and Gracie is in the kitchen talking to that eminent actor and pool room bum, Nigel Bolingbroke. They're discussing their school of culture, a venture which operates only when George is safely out of the house. Oh, Mrs. Burns, if only your husband would relent, we could operate our school on a larger scale. It's no use, Mr. Bolingbroke. George just doesn't like you, and he's very stubborn about people. I'll never forget his attitude toward my mother after our wedding. Nasty, Annie. Oh, very. We went on a honeymoon trip to Niagara Falls, and every day we were there, I got a letter from George saying, I hope your mother falls in. <laughs> it's a pity he has no tolerance. As treasurer of our culture school, I would like to see a larger enrollment. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Bolingbroke, uh, what are you doing with the money? Uh, I'm making a conservative investment in a brewery, dear lady. <laughs> Uh, a glass at a time. Oh, you're such a clever businessman. Thank you. You know, I've got a good business head, too. I thought our school might get more business if we had a catchy slogan. Oh, so you wrote one. Uh-huh. How's this? We make gentlemen out of tramps, and culture needs no ration stamp. It's a lyrical triumph. Mm, and here's one that should appeal to women. If your manners are good and your talk is classy, men might overlook an inferior chassis. Brilliantly expressed. Yes, and this one might attract soldiers who are home on leave. Don't be unpopular while you're marching. Discuss books and music with your sergeant. It's enough. You've outdone yourself. Well, I thought you'd like them. And, and I have another idea, too. What if we had testimonials from movie stars? Yes, a statement from Errol Flynn that our course in poise cured his bashfulness. <laughs> but he's never been our pupil. I know, but it would attract attention. <laughs> Nevertheless, it can't be done. Well, now, that's just where you're wrong. I've already had a testimonial printed and scattered all over town. It says... If it weren't for your school, I'd still be driving a truck. Signed, Paul Henry. Well, my dear girl, he'll be furious with you. Why should he be? We're perfect strangers. Well, you, you don't understand. Well, I've never seen Mr. Henry, even in a picture. But all my girlfriends are mad about him. I, I don't dare mention his name while they're reading. They all get hiccups. <laughs> But, Mrs. Burns, let me explain. So, using Mr. Henry's name must boost our school. Now, um, what did you want to explain? Uh, that I am only the treasurer. You head the organization. Oh, that's right. Now, in the future, if students leave any of that lovely green government-issued paper here, that's for me. And if a lawyer leaves the white paper here... That's for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Gracie, where are you? Oh, there's George. Run, Mr. Bolingbroke. In the kitchen, sweetheart. Oh, goodbye, and remember, secrecy about our school. Uh... Was that just one out the back door, darling? Uh, the, the what, dear? The back door. The back door? Yes, who went out? Who went out? Yes, the back door. The back door. <laughs> who went out? Well, make up your mind, dear. Which do you want to talk about? Look, I heard the back door slam. Now, who went out? Oh, you mean what person just went out the back door? Yes. Well, I'm glad we finally got that straightened out. Now, run along to the office, dear. Gracie, I'm not leaving till you tell me who was here. Oh, all right. I wanted to surprise you, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Good. Who was it? The census taker. The census taker? Yeah, but I told him we didn't have any, so he left. <laughs> Gracie, the man ran out when he heard me coming, and the census taker won't be here until 1950. Now, you see how bad you scared him? <laughs> Gracie, let's have a little talk. 
for about a week now. Something has been going on behind my back, and it gives me a funny feeling. Well, then take off the woolen ones and put on cotton ones. <laughs> Gracie, I'm serious. You've been acting strangely. Like you're kind of glad to see me leave for the office and sorry to see me get home. Don't you love me anymore? Oh, sweetheart, of course I love you. You're the only man in the whole world for me. You wouldn't, you wouldn't pull my leg, would you? Anything to make you happy. Lift it up. <laughs> no, I mean, don't, don't lie to me to save my feelings. If, if you're tired of me, if there's someone new, I'd, I'd like to know. Oh, don't be silly, George. You know how I feel about anything new. The older things get, the more precious they get, and you're awfully precious. <laughs> Thanks. And I miss you terribly when you're away. So hurry to the office now so I can start missing you. Well, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, hiya, George. Oh, hello, Bill. Well, gee, why all the gloom? Bill, I'm worried about Gracie. She's been acting very strangely. Really? Yeah. Bill, you, you don't suppose... I mean, surely Gracie hasn't fallen for another... Oh, no. Oh, I don't even think that, George. After all, Gracie's got the best. Why should she want another? Gee, thanks. Why, she could look this whole wide world over and she'd never find another soap like Swan. <laughs> but, Bill... No, no, George. Gracie's true to Swan, the new white floating soap, because Swan has four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, for washing the dishes and doing your light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Bill, I'm not worried about Gracie falling for another soap. I don't want her to fall for another man. Oh. Gee, oh. Gracie means everything to me. If I lost her, I wouldn't be able to eat or sleep. Yeah, especially eat. <laughs> Bill, this is serious. I may be losing my wife. Ah, oh, don't be silly, George. Gracie's crazy about you. Are you sure, Bill? Oh, sure. She worships the very ground you walk on. Why, she told me once that it filled her with ecstasy just to have you kiss her hand. Gee. She said your lips felt as thrilling as a pan of swan sud. Oh, God. Yes, she did. That's a pretty big thrill. Oh, sure, sure. Swan's sure. great for washing the dishes. It's a quick suds and wonder that gives you loads of long-lasting, hard-working suds. And boy, are those baby gentle swan suds kind to your hands. Look, Bill, forget the soap for a minute. I need your help. Now, I'm sure there's nothing wrong, but just to satisfy my curiosity, would you kind of keep an eye on the house while I'm at the office? Ah, George, there's no man but you. Where could Gracie find another man as fine, as strong, as handsome, as... On second thought, George, I'd better watch the house. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill. Well, Gracie never dreamed that Paul Henry would see one of the handbills claiming him as a graduate of her school of culture, but he did. As a result, arriving at the Burns home with a bewildered look on his face is Paul Henry. Yes? Pardon me, uh, is this the school of culture that claims Paul Henry as a graduate? Oh, yes, come right in. Thank you. Yes, indeed. We're mighty proud of what we did for Paul. And we can do the same for you. Hmm? Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, just uh, what did you do for Paul? Only made him over, that's all. We like to work with raw material, and Mr. Henry was about the rawest we ever had. Really? Oh, you should have seen him. Sort of a young Wallace Berry. <laughs> But you succeeded in making him a gentleman. Well, finally. First, we taught him grace and poise by making him walk around with a book balanced on his head. He was very good at that. I'm pleased to hear it. He, he had a natural ability. His head was gorgeously flat. <laughs> a rare gift. Yes, and then we taught him how to make love. Surely that was one thing you didn't have to teach him. <laughs> oh, I can see that you don't know Mr. Henry. Oh, of course, he knew a few things, such as how to hold hands and wink. Scarcely enough for a well-rounded life. <laughs> I should say not. <laughs> so we gave him our course in cultured whistling. Cultured whistling? Well, yes, we taught him how to whistle things like Bach and Beethoven. That way he can pick up a much nicer class of girls. <laughs> 
did this complete his course? Oh, no. And then we thought up tricks for him to do in the movies, like the one in that picture with Betty Davis, where he lit two cigarettes at once. That was your idea? But of course. When he came to me, he was so clumsy that he burned himself lighting just one cigarette. <laughs> Incredible. Well, now, if he had taken our advance course, by now he could have uh, put the whole pack in his mouth. <laughs> which would have easily won the Academy Award. Well, sure. And now I've got a thrill for you. I can make you into another Paul Henry. No. Yes. Of course, first you'll have to get rid of that funny accent. Oh, naturally. Well, where are you from, Alabama? <laughs> no, Missouri. Oh, oh. Well, what do you say? Would you like to sign up? Madam, uh, my name is Paul Henry. Oh, well, then we'll have to change it. One is enough. <laughs> you don't understand. I've let you on just to see how far you would go. I am the only Paul Henry. You? Yes. You're, you're sure? I have the word of my mother and father. <laughs> Can you trust them? <laughs> Implicitly. You have used my name falsely in connection with your school, madam. Well, oh. I'm very sorry, but I will have to have to have my lawyers call on you. Oh, oh please. Please, no tears. Oh, this, this is the end of my career. I only wanted to spread culture and be a woman that everybody admired. No, I wanted to do for humanity what Florence did for the Nightingale. <laughs> <laughs> My dear child. Now my husband will make me close the school. Your husband doesn't approve? No, he hates culture. He's just a big, sweet, uncouth baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. Now, please, no more tears. I can't stand to see a woman cry. You, you can't? No. <gasps> oh, please. Anything, anything. Oh, thank you. You're wonderful. And will you talk my husband into letting me run the school all the time? Oh, no, no. I, I couldn't do that. Oh. All right, all right. I'll talk to your husband. I'll explain how much this culture school means to you. Oh, you're an angel, Mr. Henry. And I'm sorry I said your head was flat. <laughs> That's all right. You know, it really comes to a lovely point. <laughs> Tonight, our popular young tenor, Jimmy Cash, sings, I've Had That Feeling Before. Mr. C. Oh, I've had this feeling before, but never like this. Love had me reeling before, but never like this. dream this could happen to someone supposed to be smart. I must have really been napping to let you walk off with my heart. My dreams, and I've had quite a few, were never like this.
Listen, I, I know you don't like to be disturbed at your office, but this couldn't wait. What is it, Bill? Well, you told me to stay outside your house and see if Gracie had any callers. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Who was the rat? <laughs> Paul Henry. Henry, the actor? Yeah, that's right. Brace up, old man. <laughs> it's worse than I thought. Not only a rat, but a continental rat in a pinstripe suit. <laughs> Brace up, old man. A hand kisser. A bender at the waist. Brace up, old man. Bill, I'm braced and I'm not an old man. Okay, you're braced, you're braced. I hardly know what to think. Bill, what would you do if you were me? And your wife fell for Paul Henry. Well, I... I'd get a gun. Yeah? And, and I'd load it. Yeah? And I'd shoot myself. <laughs> You're a big help. Come in. Pardon me. Uh, my name is Henry, and I'm looking for George Burns. Huh? Well, here I am. Hey, sh should I stay, George? No, Bill. You wait outside. I'll handle this. Well, okay. But if he starts anything, just scream. <laughs> well, Mr. Henry? Uh, Mr. Burns, let me begin by telling you that I'm acquainted with your wife. A most charming and lovable person. I, uh, I know that. Uh, I'm, I'm her husband. Uh, Mr. Burns, I'll be frank. Your wife has turned to me to help her get released from a very ordinary and humdrum existence. Well, that's nice. I appreciate the fact that this is a rather unconventional situation, but we can hardly blame her for wanting a little culture... Can we? Oh, gee, I, I thought I, I thought I made her happy. Oh, come now, Mr. Burns. Supplying three meals a day and a roof over her head, plus an occasional kiss on the cheek. Oh, surely you must realize that any woman wants more than that from life. Uh, are you sure Gracie feels this way? Positive. She begged me to come and talk to you. And when I refused, well, she burst into tears. Holy smoke, am I... am I that bad? Yes. You are keeping her dreams from coming true. Well, I'd kind of like to think it over. All right. There is no hurry. I'll come to your home later today for your decision. Bonjour, Monsieur Burns. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, he says. Walks off with my wife and gives me a big banjour. Well, maybe that's the stuff that gets them. Hey, how'd you make out, George? What happened? Plenty. That hunk of profile has hypnotized Gracie with his banjours. <laughs> but I'm not giving up. I'll fix him. Yeah? You got a system? Yeah. I'll beat him at his own game. Win Gracie back by being more continental than he is. I'll bring her candy, flour, champagne. I'll kiss her hand. I'll bow from the waist. Well, in other words, this is going to be a charm contest between you and Paul Henry? Yes, and may the best man win. George, don't give up so easy. <laughs> Hello, George. Home so early? Oh, Benjour, my little dub. Benjour. <laughs> Why, George, and you've got flowers and candy and champagne. Don't speak. Just stand there and let me feast my eyes on you, my lovely princess. Well, George, are you sure you're all right? Ah, uh, uh, my Cherie, I'm bewitched by your beauty. I'm intoxicated. I thought so. Tied as a knot. No, my queen. I'm always this way when you're near me. May I kiss your hand? Well, yes, if you want to. And now, may I kiss your other hand? Well, yes, I'd love it. Now, now let me kiss your hand. I'm mad about you. Tell me, my pet. Do you like me more than Paul Henry? Of course. Paul Henry couldn't like you more than I do. No, sweetheart, I mean... Could he be a better husband than I am? Oh, don't be silly. Oh, 
Come in. Oh, come in, Mr. Henry. Thank you. Well, came to get the decision, eh, Henry? Well, I've got bad news for you. My wife loves me. She's crazy about me. She thinks I'm the most charming man in the whole world. But I... You find that kind of hard to believe, don't you? A little. <laughs> You're a good loser, Henry. Goodbye and no hard feelings. But what about the culture school? The culture? What, what culture oh, school? Oh, George, didn't Mr. Henry tell you? Our home has been a center of culture. While you were at home, of course. <laughs> huh? That's what I asked you in your office. If your wife might run her culture school. You mean that's all there ever was between you two? A culture school? Of course. Oh, George Burns, you didn't think I had fallen for Mr. Henry. Well, I... Oh, you silly boy. Mr. Henry may be a great actor and talented and charming and handsome, but I like your type better. <laughs> Thanks. Gee, I'm glad that's cleared up. Mm, me too. Well, I'll go out and make some tea so we can drink to the success of our culture school. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Henry, I guess I owe you an apology. Ha-ha! I knew I'd find you here, Henry, you homewrecker. Oh, my dear fellow. Don't you, dear fellow, me going around stealing another man's wife. Hey, Bill, Bill. You needn't be afraid, George. I'm here. Bill. <laughs> How anybody could have the nerve to take advantage of a poor, feeble, little old man. Uh, uh... I, I know how you guys operate, Henry. First it's candy and flowers, then jewelry, then a yacht. And then if she still says no, you offer her what no woman can resist, a bar of swan soap. I beg your pardon? You know that women love swan because it's the white floating soap that's four soaps in one, great for their hands and face or for bathing the baby, and wonderful for dishes and light laundry. You know what happens when you tell them Swan is four swell soaps in one? This man is mad. Oh, don't play innocent. <laughs> you know how you lay that accent on as you close in for the kill and say, Mon ami, the doctors recommend Swan for bathing the baby. <laughs> sure, because you know that it's pure as fine Castiles and mild as May. And you know if Swan is kind to a baby's tender skin, you couldn't ask for a better soap for your hands and face, your complexion. Well, I suggest we discuss this some other time. Not so fast, Henry. <laughs> You've insulted my friend, George Burns. Hey, Bill. Just because he's a poor, broken-down, dried-up little weasel of a man. <laughs> and nobody can insult my friend. Er, 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 er. <laughs> I'll defend your honor, George. Mr. Henry, I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> I suppose that's the only way to get rid of you. <laughs> Very well. Name your weapons. Pistols? Swords? Swan soap at 20 paces. <laughs> what? We'll, we'll stand back to back at dawn, and we'll break a bar of swan in two. You walk 20 paces into the bathroom and use your half for your hands and face cover shower, and I'll walk 20 paces into the kitchen and use my half for my dishes and light laundry. Bill, Bill, Paul Henry is not trying to take Gracie away from me. He's not? <laughs> no. I merely wanted to help Mrs. Burns and her school for culture. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess the joke's on me, huh? <laughs> Gosh, <clears throat> Mr. Henry, you must think I'm a loud, stupid fool. Oh, you weren't so loud. <laughs> Why can't I keep my big mouth shut? So long, folks. <laughs> Amazing chap. Your wife's culture school seems to get me involved in all sorts of misunderstandings. Uh, you haven't heard anything yet. Now that, uh, now that you've endorsed this school, Gracie will run your ragged. You'll be a wreck. Well, in that case, I must find a way out. Movie actors are not popular when they resemble a wreck. They are different from crooners. <laughs> but uh, how, uh, how will you do this? I have it. I'll disillusion your wife. Convince her that I have no culture. She will not want me in her school if I speak like a... a, a bozo? Oh, uh, I say. A mug, eh? Mm. Say, it might work. And for a contrast, I'll throw in with a few banjours. Well, he is ready. Here's a napkin, Mr. Henry. Oh, thank you very... Okie dokie, Scott. Huh? Oh, oh, do you always tuck it under your chin? That's where it belongs, Toots. Oh, how 
Continental. <laughs> George, you watch them so you know what chin to tuck yours under. Uh, Banjoa. Um, what are you taking your tea, Mr. Henry? Lemon or cream? Oh, nuts with that stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, that must be another continental habit. Uh, George, run out of the kitchen and get some nuts. <laughs> no, no. I guzzle the stuff straight. You, you guzzle it? Yeah. Just dump it in the saucer. <laughs> Mr. Henry, do I only imagine it or has something happened to your culture? Nothing ain't happened to it. I just ain't got none. Oh, you ain't? No. I only give out with that baloney when I'm acting in pictures. Oh, oh, George, this is terrible. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Henry, I'm afraid I, I've made a mistake. You just don't belong in a culture school. I hope you don't feel hurt. Hurt, Schmidt. That ain't no skin of my nose. <laughs> Oh, the bumps rush, eh? Okay, I'll scram. Banjoa, Paul. <laughs> Banjoa. Oh. oh, my goodness, what a narrow escape. Why, George, you're twice the gentleman he is. What? But of course. Here, let me kiss your hand. All right. There. Now the other hand. All right. Now my elbow. Sure. Now the other elbow. Okay. Hey, what are you doing? Taking off my shoes. Benjour. <laughs> George and Grace will be back in a second, so I'll just stay here just about long enough to ask you if you've been turning in your waste kitchen fat and collecting those two brown ration points your butcher will give you for every pound of waste fat you give him. I don't have to tell you how much that waste fat is needed. You know it's converted into glycerin. And glycerin is used not only for munitions to destroy the enemy, but it's a vital part of those miracle sulfur drugs, which are saving the lives of our boys in the front lines. So look, every time you throw away even a spoonful of waste fat, you're throwing away a chance to help shorten this war. So save that waste fat and turn it in. Here they are again, George and Gracie. Gracie, you know who our guest star is going to be next week? William Powell. Oh, William Powell. Oh, he's got the most wonderful figure in Hollywood. William Powell? Oh, sure. His figure is so terrific that they're calling his new picture the Heavenly Body. Uh, who else is in it? Oh, just Teddy Lamar. Oh, Boncho. Boncho. <laughs> I guess tonight, Paul Henry, the film became the Warner Picture in our time. The makers of Swan, the new white coat and soap, join George and Grace in inviting you to tune into your Columbia station again next Tuesday at the same time. Perhaps our guest, William Powell. The following week, Adolph Manju and Barry Teasdale. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS, next Tuesday night. And now, next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Good night. <laughs>